This is the iPhone 13, probably. Yes, it looks very similar to the current iPhone 12 lineup, but looks can be deceiving. In this video, I'm telling you absolutely everything we currently know about the iPhone 13 and iPhone 13 Pro. All the big changes, all the small changes, everything in between, and whether it is a worthy upgrade and worth waiting for or not. Let's talk about it. And a big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace is the one-stop destination for creating a beautiful looking website for your portfolio, hobby, business, and a whole lot more. Stay tuned to learn more. So as it stands right now in sort of the spring, looking into the summer of 2021, we are in a very interesting time because iPhone rumors are heating up. We are learning a lot about the iPhone and what we can expect this fall. But also, as we know from past years, things can sort of seem to change on a dime. Features can be added, features can quickly be removed, and uh, everything still kind of remains a mystery. So just take everything with a grain of salt, but this is as it stands right now, everything we know about the iPhone 13 mini all the way up to the Pro Max. And first things first, let's answer a couple of questions in rapid fire style. Yes, there will be a 13 mini, despite some rumors that Apple could cancel the line. It's gonna stay at least another year. And also, we don't know if it's gonna be called the 13. There are rumors that Apple could go back a little bit and make this the 12S. So we'd go from the 12 to the 12S to the 13. But then you have names like the 12S Pro Max, which is quite a mouthful. So hopefully Apple keeps it simple and calls it the 13, though we don't really know. But for the sake of simplicity in this video, let's just stick with good old 13. In terms of design, the iPhone 13 lineup again is looking very similar to that of the iPhone 12. Apple is sticking with this industrial kind of squared off boxy edge design that they introduced with the iPhone 12. And I, for one, am all for that. Apple typically doesn't make big design overhauls year over year. They usually make one big change and then stick with it uh, for the next couple of years. So don't expect the design to change on the iPhone, at least until maybe the next year, the 14 or the year after. But again, I think this design still looks great and still holds up with all the flagships in 2021. And although the design on the outside doesn't look radically different, there are a lot of big changes that start with that display. The keen eyed among you might notice that the notch on the iPhone 13 render is just a hair smaller than that of the iPhone 12. And yes, you would be correct. The notch is a little smaller this year. It is just a little shorter and a little less wide. So it's gonna protrude in the display just a little bit less. Uh, obviously not as much as we would like. Most people would like the notch to be removed in favor of a hole punch or just a little bit of a bigger bezel, but at least we are trending in the right direction. Under the notch will be pretty much the exact same displays that we have on the current iPhone 12 lineup right now. So the 13 mini will go from 5.4 all the way up to the giant 13 Pro Max with its 6.7 inch OLED display. But there is something new coming to the Pro on iPhones this year. Yes, at long last, it seems like it's almost a done deal at this point, ProMotion is finally coming to the Pro and iPhone. So the 13 Pro and Pro Max will adopt a 120 Hertz refresh rate, uh, similar to that of the iPad Pro, which should make things feel a little bit snappier, a little more responsive, and you're gonna get some smoother scrolling on those Pro and iPhones. This is thanks to Apple adopting LTPO backplane technology for the displays of the Pro series iPhones and Thanks to Apple adopting this kind of technology, this also lends itself to having an always on display be an option as well. And we have heard some rumors, specifically from Max Weinbach, who says that the iPhone 13, presumably probably just the Pro series, because they have this LTPO tech, will have an always on display that will give you information at a glance, similar to that of the Apple Watch. So maybe the time, the weather, maybe some notifications as they come in. Information on this is very sparse and we haven't really heard much else on this, just this one rumor from Weinbach. Hopefully at least Apple has this as a feature that you can turn on or turn off depending on what you want. Now, of course, ProMotion is wonderful to see and always on display would be a great addition as well, but there are some obvious concerns here in terms of battery life. Rumor has it the last year, Apple nixed the ProMotion technology in the Pro models, specifically because that mixed with 5G was just too much of a drain on the battery. The phone just couldn't support both. So again, rumor has it, Apple opted to go with 5G instead of ProMotion. This year, supposedly, thanks to some rumors and reports from DigiTimes, the iPhone 13 Pro 
and Pro Max will consume 15 to 20% less power this year than that of, I guess, phones from the past, which is really interesting. I don't know if that's thanks to a bigger battery or the better efficiency of the new A15 chip, or if I had to guess, probably a combination of the two, but 15 to 20% is nothing insignificant. That's the difference between your phone being totally dead and still having quite a bit of battery to use to be able to text or call, or at least find yourself a charger in order to charge up that battery. That's a great thing to see that not only are we getting new features on the Pro and iPhones, but the battery technology should be better as well. Hopefully this battery efficiency also translates down the line to the 13 mini and 13 as well, but that has kind of yet to be confirmed. And on the topic of the A15, let's talk quickly about the internals of the iPhone 13 lineup. We can make an educated guess with a great degree of confidence that Apple will most likely introduce the A15 lineup with the iPhone 13 models. Uh, that'll be a more versatile processor, should be faster, more powerful, obviously more efficient as well, all around a better processor that'll supercharge your iPhone 13. We're also expecting some improvements to 5G as well. Apple's looking to adopt the Snapdragon X66 cell modem to handle 5G on the iPhone, which should get a little bit better as well. And again, we are expecting to see a bigger battery in there, hopefully. And also we'd heard rumors that Apple could adopt a vapor chamber cooling system inside of the iPhone 13 as well. We've seen this with other phone manufacturers, though we haven't heard much on this as of late. So a uh, jury's still out on whether or not Apple is going to adopt this or not, but it could mean that thermals inside of the iPhone are better and all the components just run much more efficiently. Before we continue in our iPhone 13 rumor roundup, I wanna take a quick break and tell you about this video's sponsor, Squarespace. Now, fun fact, I've actually personally been a Squarespace customer since 2015, and now six years later, I'm still using and loving Squarespace for all the reasons that got me to switch, plus a whole lot more. Something I really love and appreciate about Squarespace is that they just make it so incredibly simple to build a website. They've got a large selection of beautifully crafted templates that are perfect for getting started. Whether you wanna build an online store, a blog, or portfolio, or even something just for fun. And a little secret here for you, I've actually started to build out theapplecircle.com on Squarespace. And it has been a blast to design and build a website from the very beginning. Squarespace makes it so simple and there's no kind of web development or coding knowledge required. Anyone can jump in and start creating. It is super easy to customize a page and add elements like a YouTube video or pick your site's color scheme or easily take care of all your site's search engine optimization with Squarespace's built-in and powerful powerful SEO tools. I also really appreciate the auto optimization to make your site look perfect on whatever device your viewer is looking at it on. So desktop, mobile, tablet, your site is gonna look great no matter the device. So whether you wanna start an online business, build out your personal blog, or just kind of establish your online presence, a website is super important to making all that happen. The best place to build that website is on Squarespace. So learn more about Squarespace, check it out today at the link down below, or by visiting squarespace.com slash the Apple Circle. And if you use the coupon code, the Apple Circle, you can save 10% off the first purchase of a website or domain. I love Squarespace, I think you will too. Highly recommend you check them out today at squarespace.com slash the Apple Circle. But we cannot go any further in this video without talking about the biggest mystery that still looms over the iPhone 13. And that is whether or not Touch ID will make a return or will it not? We had heard from multiple sources that Apple was testing an iPhone that would launch in 2021 with both Face ID and Touch ID. And I guess we kind of all presume that thanks to kind of the current state of the world, that that uh, mission inside of Cupertino was accelerated to make sure that this year there was both uh, Face ID and Touch ID on the iPhone 13. Uh, the jury is still out on this. We just really don't know where Apple is going to land on this. You have Barclays analysts that are confident that Apple is likely to launch an iPhone this year with both Face ID and Touch ID. Ming-Chi Kuo gave a little less clarity to this, saying it probably will happen in another year, but doesn't say anything about this year. It is very uh, confusing times for the fate of Touch ID on the iPhone. We hope to see some kind of fingerprint reader make its way under the display of the iPhone 13. I think I know for me, that'd be a big deal and a big reason to upgrade for you as well. Do you guys really care about that or not? Would it be a big compelling reason to upgrade and drop that cash or not? Let us know in the comments down below. But as of right now, we really don't know. We hope that it comes to the 13 lineup. That'd be again, quite the big upgrade, but we just don't know if it's happening or not. Fingers crossed.
Next up, let's move to the back of the iPhone 13 and talk about the camera upgrades we can expect. For the most part, it seems like the camera system is going to stay pretty similar to what we got on the iPhone 12 with a couple of exceptions. First, we had heard some rumors that Apple could possibly uh, basically push LiDAR from just the Pro models across the line. So the 13 mini all the way up to the Pro Max would have a LiDAR sensor built in. That doesn't look like it's gonna happen. It seems like LiDAR is going to stay an exclusive part of just the Pro and the Pro Max and those phones will also get some other exclusive features as well. Rumor has it the ultra wide camera on the 13 Pro and Pro Max should get quite the significant upgrade going from an F2.4 to an F1.8 aperture. So more light for the camera to work with and hopefully better focusing as well is what we're hearing. And also we're hearing from Max Weinbach that the phones will be able to have a special astrophotography mode that can be activated to get those super cool kind of long exposure shots of the sky and the stars and also portrait video should be coming to the iPhone as well. Again, no word yet on specifically what models this would come to. Presumably though, it would use the LiDAR sensor in the Pro models to make this work, especially for Pro uh, portrait video. Uh, so again, we still don't really know the specifics, but it looks like there could be quite a lot of improvements coming to the software side of the 13 Pro and Pro Max's camera system. And speaking of uncertain things, the world of finance is sort of like a roller coaster. Some days are up, some days are down, some days are sort of up and down and in between. It can be kind of tough to kind of figure out exactly what is happening in the wild world of finance. And that is where John Rettinger comes in with our newest channel called Money Rush. In addition to this channel and the main John Rettinger channel, Money Rush is the newest addition to the JFL network family of channels and kind of completes the family as a whole. And it's hosted by the man himself, John Rettinger. If you want to know the best time to buy Apple stock or exactly what an NFT is and how to make one for yourself and how to sell one, then you got to check out Money Rush rush for all that plus a whole lot more. We'll leave a link down below if you want to check out that channel and subscribe today. Rounding out the list of some other miscellaneous changes, we could see a one terabyte option of the iPhone make its way for sale this year. And also we're hearing rumblings that Apple could introduce some new colors this year, potentially a matte black option, which would look super cool and I would definitely pick up or even potentially an orange sort of gold bronze color as well. Though that one is really uncertain. What would uh, kind of be your choice between those two, matte black, orange, gold, bronze, something in between, something else. Let us know down below which iPhone color you would love to see this year on the 13 lineup. And if all goes according to plan, we should expect to see the iPhone 13 lineup launch at the exact same price as this year and launch a little earlier than 2020 back to its normal time slot in September. So hopefully an announcement in September and a release in September as well. And hopefully, fingers crossed, no split launch this year like last year. All the phones should launch at the exact same time. And that is it. That is everything we currently know about the iPhone 13 lineup. Some good news, some bad news, and some other things that we just have have to wait and see uh, if they're going to come or not. Like under display, uh, touch ID, please, please be a thing. I really hope that happens. Uh, if you're hoping for anything crazy, like a folding iPhone or a hole punch notch, that's just not going to happen this year. If you want to uh, uh, wait for that, that's probably gonna be in possibly next year's iPhone or the year after, if you believe the rumors. But as it looks right now, the iPhone 13 looks to be a pretty solid upgrade, especially if you're coming from an earlier iPhone, like a 10, a 10S, it's probably worthwhile. If you have a 12, you might have to kind of debate that for yourself, whether or not it is a worthy upgrade or not. Anyways, what do you guys think? What are your thoughts on the iPhone 13 lineup as it stands right now? Is it exciting? Is it disappointing? Are you ready to upgrade? Are you gonna skip? Let us know in the comments down below your thoughts on the iPhone 13 as it stands right now. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Robert Rosenfeld with the Apple Circle, and I'll see you in the next one.